The UK produces 16 billion litres of sewage every day. 9,000 wastewater treatment plants operate 24-7 to treat this sewage before it is released back into the watercourse. Water treatment has a significant energy demand and as a result produces a considerable carbon footprint. Here at the University of Leeds, we have been pioneering methods to reduce the energy demand and greenhouse gas emissions of wastewater treatment plants. The removal of nitrogen in the wastewater treatment process is particularly problematic. The majority of nitrogen in wastewater is in the form of ammonium, which is devastating to the environment if discharged into watercourses. As a consequence, the EU has strict limits on the discharge of ammonium and nitrates from wastewater treatment facilities. Nitrogen removal is energy and greenhouse gas intensive. The process involves the use of bacteria, which are placed in the aeration tanks containing wastewater. The bacteria are able to convert ammonium into nitrite and nitrate into nitrogen gas. To carry out this operation, the bacteria need a constant feed of oxygen, which is supplied by pumping air. This process requires roughly a quarter of the facility's energy demand. Another concern is the metabolic byproduct nitrous oxide. The bacteria release nitrous oxide as a byproduct, which is 300 times more potent to greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. On average, three quarters of the treatment facility's greenhouse gas footprint is comprised of nitrous oxide. Diverting nitrogen containing material provides an opportunity to save energy and reduces greenhouse gas emissions of wastewater treatment plants. With my PhD project, I'm researching the feasibility of diverting ammonia-containing material from the conventional wastewater treatment process. The aim of my study is to produce hydrogen instead. Sewage sludge is ordinarily anaerobically digested at the end of the treatment process. The purpose of this is to produce biogas, which is turned into heat and power and used on site. Digestate is also formed in the anaerobic digestion. This is separated into a solid and a liquid fraction. Now the solid fraction is sold as a fertiliser, whereas the liquid fraction is diverted straight back into the wastewater treatment. By diverting the liquor to produce hydrogen instead, we can save both energy and greenhouse gas emissions. To produce hydrogen, you need sources that contain the element hydrogen. So in the wastewater treatment plant, we have three such sources. We have the wastewater, which contains the hydrogen in the water. Then we have ammonia, which is coming from our waste. And uh, we have also have the biogas, which is generated from the anaerobic digestion process at the wastewater treatment plant. Now, two of those streams are actually waste streams. The digested liquor that is generated during anaerobic digestion is something that needs to be treated afterwards. And the wastewater that comes from our, all our industrial activities, commercial activities, and our domestic residential areas also needs to be treated. So this means we have renewable needs producing hydrogen from sustainable renewable sources. But what we intend to do in the project is to steam reform the biogas generated by the digestion and also incorporate in it digested liquor in a concentrated form, which then contains ammonia, which becomes itself a source of hydrogen. Ammonia is present in digestate liquor in low concentrations, at roughly 1.8 grams per litre. The process starts with an air stripper. Air is pumped from the bottom of the column where it meets digestate liquor. When the air comes into contact with ammonia, the air forces ammonia to release from the liquor. This ammonia-air mixture is then transferred to an absorption column, where a flow of water acts to recapture ammonia from the gas. After this stage, the ammonia concentration has now increased to 15.2 grams per litre. The last stage of the ammonia recovery process is to further increase the ammonia concentration. This is carried out in a flash drum, which partially vaporizes the mixture and enables a final ammonia concentration of around 50 grams per litre. The quantity of water is also now of adequate flow for effective reforming of methane. Hydrogen is primarily produced in one reactor via two different methods. 
The first is ammonia decomposition, where ammonia transforms into hydrogen and nitrogen. The second is steam methane reforming, where high temperature steam breaks methane bonds, forming hydrogen and carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide is then used for further hydrogen production by a reaction called the water gas shift, where carbon monoxide reacts with water to form hydrogen and carbon dioxide. The hydrogen formed in this stage would be transformed into heat and power using fuel cells. It has been calculated that the implementation of this process in a large wastewater treatment plant has the potential to decrease the external electricity demand by as much as 50% and reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by over 20%.